Today's sponsors are brought to you by Ideas Unlimited. Do you have a birthday party coming up? Maybe a baby shower. Could be a wedding party. School's letting out. Could be a graduation party in mind. Ideas Unlimited has it all from custom 360 booths with backdrops to a personalized throne chair with centerpieces. You like snacks? Everyone likes snacks, am I right? Get your snacks custom made with your face on it. Ideas Unlimited can do it all and more. Get all your party needs at Ideas Unlimited, your party one-stop shop. You can contact them on Facebook and Instagram. Ideas Unlimited, proud sponsor of the Opinionated Podcast. And we're live. And we're live. So What's weird. up, guys? How you doing? How's it going, I'm doing, I'm doing really good today. How about you? Who, me? Yeah. I'm like a brand new man. Went out drinking wow. last night. Really, really Partying. Really. Had a great fucking time. Actually left the club early. Not even a club. Went to an old head spot, which is fucking perfect. Well, where'd you go? Just a local... Uh, a local spot around here, a local bar. It's just, I ain't gonna shout the name out because I ain't getting no fucking uh, what's the name from him. But <laughs> now, now you're getting it, buddy. Now yeah, you're getting yeah. it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I ain't shouting them out, but I will shout out our other sponsors. Kev can do it. <laughs> it's like that. I mean, if you like, Kev. he's rolling up. I'm well. No, I'm actually I'm finished rolling up at the moment. You know what I mean? But uh, Ideas Unlimited, proud sponsors of the Opinionated Podcast. Um, they definitely have everything that you're looking for when it comes to partying. If you need to create a party from scratch, they could do everything you need from throne chairs to backgrounds, 360 booths. Uh, they got snacks with your face on it. They can do whatever you need. All right. Uh, I've used them plenty of times. Um, Kev has used them as well. I recommend and, them to people. And and Dre definitely recommends them. Um, every party I go to has been exquisite, down to the T. And they're very reasonably priced. So you can contact them on Facebook. You can contact them on Instagram. That's Ideas Unlimited LLC. And give them a shout. Get a quote. Get your party on. You know, there's a bunch of things going on. People getting married. You know, there's a, a graduation right. coming up soon. So. Hit him up, uh, nigga. <laughs> I'm gonna get this nigga some background music. <laughs> Wrap it up, music. Wrap it up, B. <laughs> um, nah, dead ass. But yeah, check them ladies out. So, I went partying last night and um, went clubbing. Had a great fucking time, man. Out there, partying with the fam, dancing, doing my thing, and you know, dancing with shorties or whatever, and. Old me would like try to get their numbers and see what's going on after this, or basically leave the club with them. Like, yo, I'll take you home. Your friend ain't got to take you home. I'll take you home. Mm, that's last night, life. man. Yeah, last night I just fucking did my thing. Like 130, 140. I said, all right, it's time for me to go. Like, I had my fun. It's time to get the fuck up out of here, go home and chill. Didn't do that. And I was just reflecting on that. Like, man, how how much I changed over the years of, of growing the fuck up. I would have probably even tried to do that foul shit back in the day if I had a girl. Not even gonna lie. Be honest. You know what I'm saying? What made I, you this you is to where this, you this whole, Huh? Well, how did you how did you get to the point where you would go to the club, you know what I'm saying? You would try to bag whatever you are interested in and and then set them free to where you are now where you can go to the club, you can have a good time, and you're not worried about whatever you see out there. Uh, I think it's, um, it's a little bit of maturity. Also, trial and fucking error. That and trial and fucking <laughs> error. Trial and fucking error. Trial and, trial and motherfucking error. You know what I'm saying? Single guy, that that's the okay to do, thing to, to do. You know what I'm saying? You go in the club, if you're single, that's the okay thing to do. Me back in the day, me old me would try this with a girl at home. 
putting the phone number in my phone. As trying to rename the shit something else and wondering why, I, like now, have to be overprotective of my phone of where I lay it. Who's gonna text this motherfucker? You wasn't cheating, right? Nigga, I've been said on this podcast plenty of fucking times. I was the worst piece of shit of a man that you could find out there. Mm. Never lied, never shy from it, never was straight from it. Always would keep it real. We don't do that here on the Pink Nigga Podcast. <laughs> Uh, we don't. I don't try to fucking come off as some giving you advice and not giving you. I'm. I give you advice from the perspective that I've done it and fucked up. So it's just learn, a trial. Learn from our opinions. Yeah, exactly. So you know, and that's and that's me ruining families and shit. I had family set up at the time, so I, I just learned this is like, yo, it's just not fucking worth it. Like that same party is going to be there. Every week, them same people, same atmosphere is just there. Is there every weekend? If you want to find it, it'll be there every weekend. What's not there every weekend? Was not there all the time? Is a stable home, a loving family. You know, what I mean, a caring wife or partner. That shit is not there every week. No, so, no, 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 no. So. You got, you know what I'm saying? But that's just, that's just many of the things we're going to get in today about us as in our youth, basically our teens and where we are at now. That was just an example just to start the podcast. So I'm going to hit a couple of topics. Y'all guys can comment, you know, people on, on a stream yard, y'all can comment. We will see the comments pop up and we will read some of them shits, display them and go over them. But let's, let's start all the way back to for all of us to start back to high school and the games we played in high school and how serious we didn't take high school mm. and get me started the extracurricular mm. activities that we didn't participate in because mm. we, thought we were too cool to fucking do it so oh no you could you, you could keep that one yourself i was cool and i, and I you, did them you did everything i did everything only thing i wish i didn't only thing i wish i did do I'm talking shit, obviously, but the only thing I wish I did do is a uh, theater. I wish I did theater. theater, and it wasn't because I wasn't cool; it's because I was playing football and shit. So I just didn't have the time. But I wish I did theater. So, Dre, I know you. You my homie, and we always you always a funny dude. And that class clown, like the class clown, hindered you a lot educational wise, bro. But it made you the likable dude in, in school. Like, yeah. how would you have balanced that with the knowledge you have now to back mm. then? My dumb ass would have just did my work. That's that's really what it is. Um, I could have still been a class clown and did my work. But what I did was I, I basically treated school as like a social club. Like I came in there, um, I, 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 I was handsome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously though, I came in there and I just wanted to talk to girls and um be funny, make the class laugh. And then I would where I fucked up, bro, is I would leave school and I didn't have the discipline, which that's yeah, really what it is, lack of discipline. Oh, what? It's off? You're in the room. Oh, give me a second. But um, that could just be because it's quiet. But um, lack of discipline. So I just used to leave. How am I now? There you go. Perfect. Fucking stupid ass. I didn't do that. I already changed it. Anyway, so lack of discipline, bro. If I'd have left school and actually did my homework, because that's all it was about, was doing your homework. I realized the formula when I was out of school. Um, you you pay attention in class, do the homework. The stuff that was on the homework is going to be on the test. Boom, and it's a it's a round robin. That's all. So, bro, let me ask that now. How did that how did that affect you now as a Ooh. man? Like that not having that fucking discipline back then, how does it affect you now as a grown man looking back at that shit? It it comes back. It comes back because all the stuff that I should have been doing at that point uh manifested itself in different ways now. Um, you're gonna need discipline to 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 be successful at the gym, to be successful on a uh change like changing your eating habits to to learn any new skills because you think you don't have to learn any new skills when you get older. Wrong. You're going to have to learn new skills. So that's where that's I, because I'd never had the discipline for those things that I just wasn't interested in back then. I had discipline to go train for football 
and and play basketball and shit like that. I had that discipline, but I didn't have the discipline to do the shit that I wasn't interested in, like reading or um or becoming better at my, you know, at, at the intangibles, you know what I'm saying? Like reading and comprehension and shit like that. So all of that is coming back now. Um, I got certified to sell insurance a little while ago and I failed to test the first time. Now I passed it the second time, but it seemed more difficult than it should have been. You know what I mean? And yeah. even now, I still have to develop different skills to do more stuff in my life. And you have to use those same skills from school. Okay. See, Kev, I'll, how about you? And after this, I'm getting to some funny shit about high school. <laughs> um, During high school, I mean, obviously, exactly what Dre said. Uh, it was definitely just a social gathering. But I wish I had have learned more towards, like, financial literacy and knowing what to do with my money, knowing to not be the guy who just as soon as you got it it burned a hole in your pocket you see something nice you want something nice you just went and got it um i wish i was i took the time to actually learn you know the different ways of making money and managing money to kind of alleviate some of the stresses that i go through today you know what i mean like it took me a long time to learn to you know you got to chill you can't just get everything you want you know what i mean like i was a i was a true live for the moment individual i think that's how i was all throughout high school um and i kind of just directed all my energy towards that thought process and it led me to do a lot of things that you know subconsciously i may have regretted at the at that time and point but now it's just like man i should have never really did that shit mm -hmm. you know so yeah it just circled like like dre said everything kind of circled back you know karma in its finest form <clears throat> that's good man that's that's good thing man. how many people you wish you didn't kill back in high school uh, i wish <laughs> wish i did i i, I wish i would learn that eating <laughs> pussy was cool oh i was oh you're crazy back in high school i was a, i only was eating one pussy but well, I mean, eating that random pussy just all over the place. Oh, all right, just bro. Bring me in, all like, right. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, man, listen. You wish you were more. It was a. Yeah, I wish I was. <laughs> that's all. That, that's all that means. Wish I was. Wish I was. I was deviant, but I wish I was a lot more deviant. I ate, the exact, right amount, I ate the exact right amount of pussy when I was in a <laughs> when I was in high school. I think that that would have just that set you it. up to have a children even earlier. That's all. If you had children at, at, at the right at the right time for you when you had your first child was like a good pivoting point for you to be like, nah, I can't do this shit no more. I got to take this way. But if you was doing that at the age you wanted to, where you oh, think you wanted to do um, that, that, you'd have came home. You'd have you'd have been a teenager, damn near with a teenager. <laughs> I'd been in eighth grade yeah. talking to seniors. Yeah, like, remember yeah, you, you was with a thirteen year old and she had a disability, and she you said she was all twisted up, and you was ready to crack her, and you was only thirteen then. I would have did it honestly if I was you. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> we ain't gonna rehash. We're not gonna rehash. But as time went on, I'm like. At 13, you are a your hormones are going crazy. You are a basically walking, you're not necessarily a pervert, but you want all the experience because that's just your body is designed that way. I'd hit it. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. That's another thing about high school. It's like you turn down a lot of stuff, a lot of easy opportunities because how the, the shorties look. All right. Wait, wait. No, wait. I'm just saying. I'm just what? saying. No, no, no. Just random school chicks in school. It's like you turn down a lot of easy shots because I turned down uh, nothing. Oh, you turned down that you hit the you hit the big John with the everybody. Oh, said, Kev, you're yeah. a pervert. No, no, yeah, I had standards. Either. I didn't have stand. I don't have standards. I realized as I got older in my fucking twenties, like my standards went low. It was like at one point it was just quantity. It wasn't quality. Then I got back into quality, but it was at one point it was quantity. It just didn't matter. It was like, well, she's offering it. This thing can laugh in the corner. This white guy. I, I'm, I'm listening. I wasn't laughing. I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm like, I'm like, yo, that's kind of relatable. That's kind of no, relatable. No, it's he it's had true. a quantity yeah, point too. As, time, yeah, as, time goes as he on. said that, I'm like, yeah, yeah. There was a time where it was just like you were picking them off like like a hunter. You in you out there hunting, and you see a kill. You just you just going for the kill. You're not even really 
Oh man, that was a small one. Oh, there go a big one. Oh, that's the perfect size. Nah, nah, you're getting them all. You know yes. what I mean? You, you're killing everything in, in the area. Kev was like a Pokemon. Period. It's like Pokemon. Gotta catch them <laughs> all, buddy. Gotta catch them all. I get it. I don't wish that in high school I was like, oh, let me fuck everything. No, I didn't want to yes. fuck everything. I'm like, just saying that. The that exact just... right amount. I probably wish I would have hit more. Because there was a couple options for bad, think, bad ones that I could have hit that I didn't. Oh, I got a, you know me. I was a little, I was a weirdo in high school, so I, you know, what I mean, oh, I got a girl. No, I should have hit the bad ones too. Yeah, I nah, but I see, back in the day, and, not the and big ones, not to, not to, not to stay on this subject, but back in the day, if Kev remembers, there was like a competition style. You know, what I'm saying like who we used to be first? like who who it's just the most at the point. It was just like at. Eh, Put her on, put her on. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it was like tallies at one point. Yeah. We all got, we, remember there was competitions, like real. It was a good. It was a garage. Like my house, people's females say my house. Like when I lived in Sickleville, like you had you caught a studio. reputation <laughs> if you went to that house. You caught a reputation as a female if you went to the house. But like I said, not to stay on that subject, bro. <laughs> it could go. It could go. It could go south. But um, like. We did the high school and shit. Like we did talking about high school and and, and, and so we're really talking attention. about how our mentalities changed from that. Uh, basically, how okay. our mentalities changed over over the years, man. Um, over because, a something year period. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of shit I look back on now that I wish I'd done different. Like I don't ever want to change the situation of my kids and the mothers who I had them by but if I can get all their souls and all of their their quirks and hot listen to me because your kids have their own individual soul and how they are as a person of course yeah they have their own individuality how they look and how they act if I can still get all of that and put it you know put it right back in the same place but be with the same person i probably would have did it so probably a couple of females i would you know i mean i get what you're saying yeah i wouldn't even mess with or had kids by can can i can i add something there yeah um i heard one time that everybody like in your family now i'm loosely i'm loosely quoting this but it has something to do with what you said i heard that um everybody in your family like Everybody re um, what is it called when when you when you die and you get re reincarnates? Reincarnate, yeah. Somebody said that everybody in your family gets reincarnated as different people. So like, your great grandma might wind up being your son or daughter. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. They're still a part. Like everybody's still a part of each other's lives. It's like you have soul ties. Um, do y'all believe in anything like that? Like that you know, that you guys are connected pretty much forever as you reincarnate or something like that? I do. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. I, I think there's just the one thing that see, it's hard for you with religion. You just have to kind of believe and have faith and stuff. And it's mm -hmm. hard for me to just focus in and be like, yo, that is what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Because I don't, when I'm unsure about something that's just, that is just what it is. But the one thing that I do believe in is that every, there's nothing new under the sun, really, you know? So I believe in some sort of reincarnation that somehow, some way we're, we're just reborn in a sense, or, you know, okay. Just, just the spirit of energy in itself, you know. Energy, energy is neither created nor destroyed. So I feel the as though energies are connected in a sense. Like you ever meet somebody and y'all just hit it off right off the bat, like yo, yo, mm -hmm. we are, I, that's the energy. Like you just kind of, or you meet somebody, you like yo, I feel like I've known you for years. There's just that feeling that you just known somebody for a minute, or you know what I mean. That shit right there to me feels like that's two energies matching. Like for us three as a trio, the way that we treat each other, how we are with each other, just you know, we we honestly love one another. We treat mm -hmm. each other like family. And that that's our energies matching. And this is you talking about decades. You know what I mean? This isn't some we hopped on a podcast and or we just met each other not too recently and we started vibing nah we've done we've been doing this for decades have have going through all types of, of shit all of us together 
You know what I mean? So that's just the energies matching and relating, and 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 it's something about cool. yo. Know, this had to be something from the past. You know what I mean? And I think it'll continue in the future once I'm gone. That's why they say, well, you'll meet him again when you're gone. Yeah. yeah. That's the I first mean, thing you always say, yo, when you're gone, you'll see him again. Don't worry about it. Like, why? how do you know that's to be true? It's got to be the energies. That's And that's just how my thought process is. Neither created nor destroyed. Yeah, exactly. I wish. That's, that's another thing about energies and shit like that. We're talking about that and sticking to the subject. There's a lot of people that in my life, females, I wish I just never messed with because they were just cool. And I wish I would have just left them as fucking friends. just left them as friends. Just left them as somebody that I can always talk to on a regular basis. Yeah. But because a younger, dumber me was like, well, we're close. And I somehow finesse my way into sleeping with you is like, now I kind of like ruined the friendship. And it's like, if yeah. I could have trapped myself on the shoulder, like, hey, yo, Kev, not this one, you know, or not that one. I mean, it, bro, think about if, it. What, bro, if, let me ask you. Let me ask you, because you coming up with some good shit that's making me have questions. And I'm just, I'm just firing them off. If, if you right now can go back and talk to the guy who was 20 or 23, what would you tell him? Like, what would you tell him to get prepared for? Like, what would you tell him? Both uh, of y'all. Me personally, I yeah. would tell, I would tell him, like I said, I, have the people. conversation right in front of me. Have yeah. the conversation. I, no, I want you to literally no, to it. as if you're talking to him. Yeah. First of all, there's a couple of people that's gonna come to your life. And I understand it's gonna be easy target. Don't sleep with. There are gonna be some other people that come in your life. Don't be so hesitant to rush into rush into a relationship because of your situation with you know I was you're a, you're, you're a single father and you think you got to have a stable relationship for your kids or for your daughter at the time go enjoy life see a little bit more life meet a couple of, you know different people and don't always be so quick to settle also when you do settle my dude block the bullshit out block all the fucking the the temptations and all that shit out because that should always be there and if you want that your best bet is just to stay single and not ruin so many people's lives and shit you know what i'm saying because you do ruin their lives you know mm -hmm. just slow the fuck down man take it in piece by piece see different things you know what i mean yeah and and if i had if i got if you got kiera just raise her up man you know what i'm saying Worry about that, not worry about the pressures of trying to build a family because you're not ready for that shit right now. Mentally, you're not at all. Okay. That's what I would have told myself. Man. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I, I would probably tell myself, um, take take your time. Um, but there is a clock. So I would say take your time with shit. You know what I mean? Like I know you're I got married when I was 27. Um Make it right, you know what I mean? Because we, you know, it was cool. We got married, how we got married, but I'd rather have had like a big wedding, you know what I'm saying? Just just for the memories, you know what I'm saying? Because we always talked about doing it as, doing it again, but like as a destination, um, you know, with our close friends and family and shit. Um, but I would be more concerned with um, just working on my skill, skill level. Like I would tell myself to please, number one, read. Don't be afraid to go back to school. Quit Verizon. If I'm 20 something, quit Verizon. It's okay. Yes, you make a good amount of money right now, but you'll get to 30 something and you'll be roughly in that same area. And it's been 10, 10 fucking years and you're making that same exact amount, 15 years. So I would say quit Verizon. Don't be scared. If you want to go back to school, go back to school. If you want to, like, don't be afraid to experience life. Get up, get out and experience life. I know you want you want the house, you want all that stuff. It's coming, but don't be afraid to experience life and learn some new things now so you're more well-rounded when you get to my age. That's what I would tell myself. Um, and um, maybe, maybe go and uh, see what kind of sperm stuff they got so you can have some damn kids. See, go get some sperm, go get some sperm medicine. 
They make that, right? Yeah. They I yeah, mean, they I, make it. I, I, or you could have got checked out earlier. I would have got checked out earlier. Is that was yeah, a it, that was a jokey way of saying that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, buddy? Um my shit is if you could talk to yourself, yo, if I <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I would end up crying. I stock at Jordan's. So, oh. nah, I mean, I would, I, the things that, the confessions that I would make about myself, the future self, about the, just, I would literally just tell them exactly what I did and, and how I'm affected now, mm. um, you know, be, I think I would really focus on being more family oriented oriented when I was younger. Um, I mean, I was always around my family when I was a kid, but as I grew older, I wanted my own. I kind of stepped out into my own and I've had that feeling of not needing anybody. I'm gonna try to do this on my own and taking routes that I really wouldn't have taken if I had to kind of just listen to some of the people who actually told me the things that I needed to know and not being the person who thinks he knows it all. And I see that in my kids now, my oldest, when I try to talk to her and, and I, it's hard for you to tell somebody who you see yourself in that you've done it and, and try to steer them the right direction. And you know that they want to do it on their own. And she's only 13. You know what I mean? And I see myself because that was me. And I know the hardships that come with that now. And explaining that and not knowing my my background and not having the relationship with my mom or my mom's side of the family and me being closer to you two than, you know, some of the actual blood brothers that I have. It's it's It leaves you in a space where it's kind of like, you're just lost in a sense because there's people that you love, but it's like, how well do you know them? You know what I mean? And hmm. I only know what I'm used to and what I see in front of me and what I deal on a daily basis. I seclude myself a lot and I focus on just me being with my family and what's, what's in my household. And um, I can honestly say a lot of times I, I was just overly selfish. It took me a long time to not be selfish, even as an even as an adult. Even when I had kids, when I first had kids, you know what I mean? It took me a while to just understand what it is to be a partner. The the things that I would tell myself, I would just try to alleviate a lot of the trials that I went through and maybe. And it's funny because me and my sister Day had a conversation the other day and I was just telling her about some shit that's going on with me. And she's telling me some shit that's going on with her. And I sat back and I asked a question and it kind of pertained to what you were saying and, and it kind of hit home. It's like, yo, if you had the opportunity to be if, if there was a point in life, everybody comes to a certain point in life where some being or some superpower comes to see you and they give you the opportunity to push a button and it's like a reset and you get, you get to start back from a certain age and it's like you woke up from a dream and you get to see everything just kind of like click. If you've ever seen the movie click, mm -hmm. do you get, do you take that chance knowing that all that you have now, the kids that you Ooh. love, the people that you know, Shit. you know, you take that chance. And as much as it hurted me to say, I probably would. And I love my kids. I die for them, my kids. You know what I'm saying? There's people in my life that I would literally let myself go for. And all of that could change with that one push of a button. Mm -hmm. But the way that I see things, it, I, I, I would end up taking that chance. That's crazy. Uh, to that, that thought, that thought. Would, it's an incredible thought experiment, bro. And I, I, you really touched on something when I heard that it just kind of clicked something in my brain. Yo, Kev would take that. Would you take that, Kev? Would you take the click? Bro, that's that's just, a crazy question, bro. Bro, I was just thinking about that. I was on the ride wow. home just the other day. Same thought came to my head, man. And it oh, was shit. like, I was like, I had the same thing. Like, damn, if I had the chance, I might take it to redo it all over. Would I? And it's just. Okay. 
And you got to understand the risk of like my kids because mm-hmm. of certain people I wouldn't, I know I wouldn't allow to come in my life. That's what but I'm saying. It would risk mm-hmm. your kids. Losing I know. I know. A and, couple, and maybe, maybe, like I said, maybe one or two of my kids. And the thing is, when you wake up from pushing that button, you have, you know, a lot of the knowledge right. that you that you that you have going through this experience. It's like you woke up from a dream and you don't know if it was. A, I mean, it, it, mm-hmm. I guess it would be a nightmare in a sense. Well, you don't know. You OK. So so you stumble on something. I just want to add something before you continue. So there's knowledge that you have, like soul knowledge, and then there's brain knowledge. And I yeah. think what you're referring to off of that is like soul knowledge. Yeah, so exactly. It's not, yeah, it's not that you like, okay, I remember, I'm not going to name any of your kids, but I don't remember Johnny or Bobby. You remember you remember the feeling of having kids, but you don't literally remember the yeah, exact, exactly. The but exact, you know the pain, you know the pain that these kids, like, I, it's pain. Like this, see, here's what fucks me up. I don't even give a fuck because I really don't care. I, I don't hate the person, but I really don't care much for the person. Nigga, like Drake camera is nosy. My, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know he was doing that. <laughs> I, I'm not going to, I, I, you know, I hope this ain't a shit session on her, but I really don't, like I said, I really don't care for the person. Oh, bombs away. To happen to do, yeah. I want them to have bad this person, but I don't really particularly care for this person. My, my oldest daughter's mother is like, do I go, do I mess with her? Because I love my oldest daughter. But I know all the bullshit I had to go through, all the bullshit she has to go, she had to go through. And it's like, yo, if I make the mistake of having this kid again with her and knowing what I know is like, yo, I can't mess up on the crucial shit I did to get a, to get a hold, to have my daughter being raised with me forever. Or do I not even put my daughter through this situation? Do I not, I let, her mother have a kid by somebody else and that thought of this baby is fucking struggling with this person that should have been mine and been raised with me it's like i cuz i probably wouldn't have messed with my my oldest yeah daughter. but you wouldn't I, you wouldn't know that you'd have to see i would feel it to, in my soul i, I feel mean, like something's not a part of me i know something i know something is not there that was there that people don't understand about my oldest daughter my oldest daughter kept me in check really kept me kept me in line and kept me in check from doing a lot of dumb shit like my brothers if anybody know anything about my brothers man especially my brother kb at one point he was a wild ass dude and i was smart but i followed this nigga to the ends of the earth and it was a lot of situations that for me having a kid is like yo i'm not going bro i'm not gonna go with you this time that got him jammed the fuck up. And I've been right behind and I would have been right behind him. It was like I said, the, I always talk about the situation. The only time I all the, ever thought about killing somebody. The first time. If it wasn't my daughter put hesitation in me. Just enough to make the right decision. You know what I mean? Just a just a split second. Of me thinking about her put the right decision in me probably being in jail for 20 years. Because if it wasn't for her being there, I would have reacted completely different. I wouldn't have had that thought process of, I wouldn't have had that thought process. Because what came in my mind was, is she going to hate me? How old is she going to be? Who's going to raise her? Who's going to take her? Take care of her? And it was just that little pause that put that little pause in me to make me say, yo, Wait and see how this situation plays out, Kev, before you pull this trigger. And it would it was just enough. Just that little pause and the situation went right for me. God made the situation right for me because I had that little pause. If I didn't have her and I didn't have that pause, shit would have went left for me. I wouldn't be, I probably wouldn't be sitting here doing this podcast or these kids or having the situation, the life I, lifestyle I have right now. Real rap. So yeah, I mean, okay. but the thing about it is, with with that whole scenario, you close one door and then you end up opening another. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, you don't know what else comes because, like, perfect. You know what I'm saying? So you don't. 
that that's the that's the tricky part about pushing that button is that just because you escaped the first scenario doesn't mean you escaped the second scenario mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and i mean a lot of times in life i feel like like i believe in that multiverse shit i believe that that there has to be different versions of energies that's either like me similar to me or or parallel that's me you know yeah completely parallel and somebody one of these me's i got to be if <laughs> i got to be the one that's doing almost not the be- not the bottom bottom but i'm like just the just the right below mid guy you know what i'm saying and there's another me out there who's just thriving and i, I don't it's interesting i don't you know what i mean like if you push that button you don't know if you're going to become that one or you're going to be the one who sh- strung you could be strung out on drugs you know what i mean Very you're really taking a chance to just to see it's like a roll of the dice mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know what i mean and that's this but that but if you're willing to take that chance it just goes to show how much you feel like you haven't completed it's regret you wanted to complete exactly yeah <clears throat> So. And and you know and you know what that that puts me into like the thought process of the challenges that are meant for you are meant for you, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly the way they're set, which means you know because I ain't gonna lie, man. Over this past week, I just got really frustrated, and I'll and then we can we can continue. I got really frustrated, man. Um, right now, I got some challenges right now, like not bad challenges. Like I could be in a whole nother type of. To me, there are challenges. It's not my life ain't bad or nothing. My life is great. Got a got a good woman to take care of me. But it's some challenges that I'm dealing with. And I got really frustrated, man, because I, you know, I stay prayed up and I really put a lot of stuff in God's hands. And I had a moment of weakness where I just questioned. I was like, yo, why can't I just get like why can't I figure out this algorithm that you got going on? Like, why am I so wrong about everything it feels like you know what i'm saying like i know you got a plan but why why are you not letting me in on it like i keep figuring trying to figure it out and follow the plan but it feels like i'm wrong everything i think of is what mm-hmm. i figured out so i had a moment of weakness where i really started questioning things and uh i got it together but the challenges that are meant for me are meant for me in this moment in this in this life so i know we talked about the button and everything but it's like well, that's the point. If you go back, then you still have to go through a whole new set of challenges that might make you say the same thing when you get to that point again. But right now, yeah, you have to learn from those challenges. Now, I knew this for a while. I figured it out. I was like, oh, I got to learn from these challenges. But sometimes when you're in those challenges, you like, uh, yeah. I don't see the end. I don't know where the end is. God ain't let me in on that part. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, is there an end oh, to these challenges? <laughs> so you know let me... So let's to be let's candid, move, to be candid. Let's move this conversation along, but stay in the same lane. At one point in your life, somebody gave you some advice that you kind of shrugged off, that you look back at now, and you're like, Man, maybe I should have fucking took heed to what this person said. Mm-hmm. And I know y'all all got one. Um Kev, well, yeah, Kev, you go because you Dre's drink or, about it. or what they're saying. Pay, just whatever. It's a, it came a point in your life, somebody who ca- who cared about you, hey. seeing you were slipping and gave you some advice, and you was like, and you just still went about doing your own thing. Is that you? Yeah. Probably- you know what? When I was younger, and and I want to say naive about things. Um, there's one thing that my grandmother bless her heart, used to always say to me is, you know, your friends aren't necessarily your friends. A lot of people are there for the moment Mm -hmm. and their moment is going to be up and it won't necessarily be something that you'll be okay with. They'll, they'll turn their backs on you. You don't know what a real person is until they're deep. You're really deep in the trenches and some shit happens. You know what I mean? And now you're in the middle of something. Who's going to take care of you? You know what I mean? If if you're in a situation where you need help, are they going to help you? And you just be like, nah, man, I'll be doing, I'll do this, I'll do that. And then you 
actually run into that scenario and some foul shit happen. That's the one thing that I would think of in my head. Like, and it's 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 definitely like a life changing situation. It's some shit that you may never get over. You know what I mean? Dealing with the person that you really, really like you really fucked with heavy. This was this was your your man's or this was your shorty or whatever the case may be. And then some wicked foul shit happened. And now it pivots your life to a whole different direction. You know what I mean? And it's it's simple stuff like that. I mean, you always get the regular stuff. One thing, <laughs> nothing good happens after 12. I used to hear that all the time. <laughs> oh, I thought, you meant the age, I thought you meant the age of 12. I'm like, yeah, no, somebody no, was a no. cynic. <laughs> nothing good happens after midnight. You know what I mean? I mean, that's that's absolutely stuff like that. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's it's but it's certain stuff like as soon as something happens, mm. you'll hear what that person told you. And you'll be like, yo, I don't know why I didn't listen in the first place. And now your life could be thrown completely off and you have to figure out how to get it back on track. Mm. Dude, Dre, you got one. If not, I'll go. Um, I don't really have one because all my shit is a little bit more surface level. Because I mean, I wasn't. Still, I in, mean, I wasn't still. in the streets. I wasn't. I wasn't in the streets. Uh, you know, I, I got, I got a girl pregnant in 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 high school. I don't now with the way my sperm work. I don't think so. But um, so, and it was shit like that. But I don't really have none. And your shit better not be about no sex. No, I'm gonna tell you straight. Like my my father used to always say to me, make sure you deal with somebody that's equally yoked. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? He was like, son, you gotta have you gotta deal with somebody who's on the same level with you. And I'm like, ah. And all I would think about was how the chick looked and whatever. And and it sat back with me. It's like it's like, man, if I would have dealt with chicks. Or females that was on the same level at me at at the times like I probably would have been a little bit further in the game. A lot of that shit would have been tied together, but I wouldn't have struggled as fucking much, or I wouldn't have hated these people as, as sometimes as much as like because we're not struggling over financial issues or anything like that, or who's working and who's not and all that other sh- you know what I mean goofy shit. And he used to always say this shit to me. And I'm like, and here we go again with this shit. And Pop's like, why are you always telling me this shit? I don't want to hear this shit. And a lot of times not listening to him caused certain shit to happen. And my car getting repossessed. Uh, you know what I mean? Dealing with somebody when her situation was great, great. If my situation was fucked up, I shouldn't have rushed into the relationship. Like I should have been like, yo, just got you. Give me some time to get my shit together. Cause maybe this might work out. Right now I'm in a fucked up state and you're in a great state. And you wasted all your energy in caring on trying to get me help me get right back financially. Now when I'm starting to come back right financially, you don't have the same love. For me, as you once did, because you don't know if this is fucking real or not, and it just caused a lot of rift with a couple people. Man, it's a couple people I just won't talk to to this day because of how fucked up financial situations was, mm-hmm. and and or my mind state and their mind state. Their mind state was still run the streets and have fun sometimes, and my mind straight. My mind was on like yo. You know, let's just do this family shit. And it's like, I can't be mad at them to do this family shit because technically this ain't this person's kid. And she don't have no kids, but I do. Mm-hmm. So how the fuck can I try to convert her over to doing this family shit right now? Like, I should just took it as it was and just have fun with her, keep my family shit separated and and dealt with it like that. So... Like I said, it doesn't necessarily Dre got to be some Jedi mind trick shit, but it's just something that your parents said to you that if you even just took a slither of their advice, your life would have probably been just a little bit better than what it is right now. I'm going to be really honest and uh, don't don't take like, you know, don't take this as me saying like I'm the smart. I'm not smart. 
or I ain't gonna say I'm not smart, but I'm they could just this, say this is gonna sound smarter than uh than than it needs to. So all the people who matter to me who told me shit, I listened. Great. Now later on, I might have just did my own thing. Like my mom is gonna she's gonna tell me to go to college and stuff like that. I did. Yeah. Then I stopped because I thought mm-hmm. that money, you know, I thought the money that I could make at that point in time was worth more than getting an education. Um like just most of the, my grandpa, I listen to everything he told me. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, but did you follow listen. through with it completely, or did? Well, you yeah. Well, if you I'm about to say yeah, like when it comes to following through, yeah. So that's that may be what I regret. But as far as what they told me to do, I've done them, and nobody else really told me to do anything. I guess, <laughs> and the, oh, that I can remember, that I can yeah. remember that made a mark, that made a mark on me. You know what I'm Cause, saying? Because it's conversations we like. It's kind of like I got kids now, and. I got to have you? a conversation. Yeah, I got to have a conversation with my daughter, which is going to come up. And it's not a bad one, but it's just like, I'm at the point now, like Kev said earlier, how the fuck do I tell her to do something where half the time people told me to do shit? And it was like, it went in one ear and it kind of went out the other. It's like, uh, why are you, why are you lecturing me again? <laughs> Uh, One of those things. Shout out. I I want you to continue, but I just want to put this where you're saying so that we can have context. Shout out to Andre. He randomly texted me earlier this week. Youth is wasted on the young. Ain't that true, bro? I was like, yeah. "Yeah." Like, I say that shit all the time, but it was like random. And what you're saying is it it just folds right into that. You know what I'm saying? I just want to say that. Yeah, because I'm looking at my door. Like, I we just, like, had a conversation where I'm sitting down with I'm like, yo, yeah, you're 21 now, and it seems like you have everything in front of you. But I'm like, just think about how it wasn't not that long ago. You was nine years old. Think about how fast that went by to you being at 21. That's how quick 21 is going to turn into 30, oh, and 30 is going to turn into 40. You got to start having a fucking plan. Like, I handed a lot of shit to you that I wasn't granted the opportunity to get. Like, I had to grind for this shit. You are so much further ahead of the curve than me. You don't have any kids. You don't have, you was granted a car. You don't have any real bills. You don't have a, somebody who your decisions can fuck up their life. You know what I'm saying? You don't have that. You can mess up and fucking start all over again. I didn't have that opportunity. If I messed up with you as a kid, oh, it fucked you over big time. And I felt that shit. I felt that pain. Like, I shouldn't have drug you through this shit. So I got to have that conversation with her. And it was conversations like that. My mother and my father try to have with me most of the time. And it was like, yeah, why are we doing this lecture and shit? I don't want to hear. I get it. Like, I Let, think I got it. Can, can I ask you? Because yeah. I understand what you're saying. I just started thinking of if if that ever, you know, was the case with me. What if, like, your parents would have took you some, like, what, they, what, they, what if they would have made a thing of it? Like, I know that maybe in passing, maybe you in the car with your dad or something like that, and he might be giving you game and you might not want to hear it. What if they made a thing of it? Like, what if he took you fishing or something, something that y'all didn't normally do, and he literally sat you down like, yo, I need to have a talk with you and really laid it all out for you? Would you have listened then? I probably would listen then because that car, that you getting in, that car ride of you riding around and him talking to you, your mom talking to you, kind of like, uh. Especially the one where you get in trouble, you do something, you get in trouble, uh, and they're trying to fucking lecture yeah. you. Yep. They're not telling you anything wrong. And that's the thing. Oh. You're just so upset that you fucked up. Mm-hmm. You don't want to hear it at the time. It's like, yo, this ain't the time to tell me. Where it's the fucking perfect time to tell you. It's like, yeah. this is where it's going to set in the most. You, right now, you can see your fuck up. And I'm mm-hmm. going to give you game of why you fucked up and how not to fuck up again. Right. But as a kid, what you do, you get in your feels. Like, man, I don't... Mm-hmm. here we go. Like, here, and you put you, you were saying, you said, here we go. Stupid and ass you kid. Just, <laughs> you're just droning this shit out. You're droning, even if she turned the radio down, but you can still hear that radio a l- little bit. You're mm-hmm. fucking trying to focus in on listening to the radio other than listening to them. 
But just think about it. Just think Definitely. about how many times you got in your fields, and it was something minor you might got in trouble for, but they tried to let you. Come on. Now that's should be that should open up the floodgates for everybody right now. A shit you should listen to. I mean, just thinking about the times right. you just okayed your parents till they just got out your face. Okay, okay. And now when you talk to your kids and they do that to you. And you know what you went through, just okaying them and, and not really taking heed to what they say. It's just, it just seems like a recurring event. You're just like, what the fuck? Am I living through this twice? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and that's the scary part, though, is because you kind of, and you, it's not until you become a parent that you understand why your parents are the way they are. Oh, shit. Sure. Reality. I, you know what I mean? I because. Understand. You you shut up, Dre. You you've taken you've 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 taken care of kids though, you know, housed them, clothed them, the whole night, talk, fed them. So our, waited our, for my wife to discipline them, you know what I'm saying? You talked to our kids. <laughs> you talked yeah. to our kids before when they fucked up before. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You're you and you're a godfather to a couple children, so you yeah. know what I mean. Call me the so, godfather. Yeah, like but Dre, think about that uncle situation, that uncle that just why is this nigga talking to me? <laughs> he holds no bearing. Like with certain shit. It, with certain shit, it's like they hold no bearing because it's like, well, why but should I listen to you? Even though my uncle doc to talk to me in the morning sometime, it, it kind of, I remember, I hearken back to that now um, with my uncle doc, but he would just, you know, give me regular life advice and shit like that. So, yeah, yeah. We all got it's somebody, it's older cousin or somebody that you know. What I mean, so you be looking at them like, all right, they don't. Li- yeah, I, oh, I'm the guy. I'm the guy. I almost do it to a fault, man. Where like I used to do it all the time. Now I don't, because most of the most of the the younger kids or the younger they're they're older now. They don't fucking listen to me. My cousin Antoine, he still does it though. And I be like, man, you gotta shut the fuck up. These kids don't care about what you're talking about. <laughs> you because you, you can't just tell them and then go about your business. You have to tell them and then stay on it. And I figured out that I'm not on it like that. To for me to be like, "Yo, man, how you doing?" This you got to let them come to you with questions. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's what I do now. You know what I mean? Well, as a parent, sometimes you just feel like you're scared it might just be too late. You know what I mean? Like they'll come and ask after it's too late, or they'll learn the hard way. That's the that's what you try to help them avoid. Because that's what that's what you you harbor in your in your own head, the things that you used to not listen to, and and then after it happens, now you're like, oh shit, I should have took that advice, and now you live by that because you already know, you know, you already know what the experience is like, and you try to prevent. And my daughter said something to me the other day that kind of, I mean, she literally said some shit that. I know I would have said when I was a kid and she was like, I know that y'all want to tell me I need to do this and I need to do that. But there's a lot of things that I just need to experience that. And I'm like, yo, you 13. What the hell do you think you need to experience? Nah, she at 13? You. But but in a sense, I understood that, you know, what I'm saying, because I'm like, yeah, I understand you need to experience stuff. But there's some stuff that you have to be aware of, even when you're going through this, you need to know. You know what I'm saying? Like, look out for certain things. Even even if you decide that you're not going to take my word to not do something, you need to look out for certain stuff mm-hmm. and, and know. You know what I mean? I I had to grow up to know to be street smart and and actually intellectual with people and 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 be able to know how to talk to certain people one way and talk to another group of people another way. You know what I mean? How to be in and out of certain situations and. I don't think kids are really taught that these days to to be both to be smart in school and and be able to be smart in the street and kind of know a little bit of both and be able to use both of them to your advantage. I didn't know how to use both of them to my advantage. I just did what I needed to do to get by, really. What I thought was right at the moment. Yeah. Kind of fucks you. You know what I mean? And I don't yeah. you as a parent, you don't it's really and Kev, I know Kev goes through it the most because he has an adult daughter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So everything that I'm probably going through, Kev probably like, yep, but you ain't seen shit yet, cuz. You know what I mean? Like, I've been there. And that's just scary. It's Because it's, I don't it's know scary. what I'm going to do. It, I mean, you're going to do what you what's right at the moment, but but 
you get tired of living by that situation because what's right at the moment might necessarily be right in the future. You know what I mean? Every decision that you make, you have to you have to make to be sure that it's going to be okay for them later. And right, right now you you're trying to grab a steering wheel of a car that's going out of control. Of it, you know what I'm saying? And Damn. you're trying to steer this motherfucker as, to your best ability to keep it on the fucking road without crashing the fuck out. From the passenger seat. Yeah. yeah but uh, You know what I mean? Challenges that are meant for you are meant for you. That's the one yeah. thing. You got a lot of kids out there, and I'm speaking from just watching and being a kid because I ain't got no kids, but got a lot of kids out there who their parents tried everything they could to steer them in the right direction, and they just did what they wanted to do. Some of them come out of it. Some of them, you know, might go homeless just because they don't want to listen to their 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 parents or or the adult, and then they come back from it like, okay, I learned something from that, and now they're you know successful or they're good parents, whatever it is. I'm just saying, like the challenge is meant for you or meant for you. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, bro. Think about this because we're gonna stay on the su- subject and finish out. But look how many people that you hung out with that was doing their own thing that are just straight fucked up now. It's like, bro, how did you get here? Thank God I kind of got you out of my circle or got out of your circle because you just ain't doing shit with your life. That's 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 interesting because, and I'm so lucky, and I've said this on this podcast before, I'm, I'm extremely lucky. How long I've been friends with y'all? For a very long time. 23 years y'all know my friends y'all know my friends before that like that my 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 like long friends before that that's tough that's nard Mm -hmm. that's that's how it's been for me forever all of my friends are kind of in the same ballpark like i got friends that i grew up with that were you know that some of some of them are dead you know some of them went to jail and all that but nobody who I don't wish that I didn't have any contact with or wasn't close with because we weren't close enough to influence each other in that way. We influence each other. And my friends yeah. that, you know, Tuck, my Tuck and Nara, we influenced each other at the time. But anybody else, we they didn't have that influence on me to be able to, like, for me to be able to, like, I wanted to, when I was younger, I wanted to sell drugs, but that's because everybody I knew sold drugs. You know what I'm saying? And they was getting the fresh, the fresh clothes and shit like that. But then I got a job. Yeah. You know? But, yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying, but just look at look at the people. Cause we're like you said, we're 23 years worth of friendship. Kev as blood, even though we're not blood, but I knew Kev yeah, that's since it. I was fucking nine years old. I'm yeah. fucking 40 years old. You talk about 31 fucking years, 31 fucking years. Mm-hmm. But think about all the people that came that used to be a part of our circle because it was yeah, it's always been us three. But there's people who fucking came in our circle that was a part of our circle that we kind of like pushed them the fuck out. And you see some is like some of them are damn near borderline homeless. Still fucking, you know, like you 40, like. How much longer are you going to keep being Walk, at your mom's walking crib? Around. Mom, okay. yeah, moms and them is it, it, is getting older. Mm-hmm. Like, how long are you going to like, dude? I understand we went from weed to this, but th- nigga, you want some hardcore shit right now? Like, you fucking yeah. with some hardcore drugs right now? We all know, like, we seen people that came in our circle like that. It was like, man, I'm kind of glad that we stayed together and pushed some of them people out of our circle. And hopefully because they were once upon a time, our friends, hopefully at some point in life, they do get together. And some of you see later on that finally starting to get their shit right. Like you're like, I'm genuinely happy to say, yo man, bro, that's what's up. You're doing that, man. Keep doing your thing. Keep pushing, bro. Like I understand what you've been through. Like, cause we kind of pushed you out of our circle. And I just looked at you from afar. I'm glad you're doing so much better now. Like, just think of all them people because there's a lot that was in our circle that just... I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, through like you've, you, it's, it's, it goes back to what we said. It's just the views of what you had when you were younger compared to the views and what you hold within your standards and what you treasure to be real in your life 
now they're they're totally different. You know what I mean? You you wanted different things at the age of a teenager to your young twenties. Then you wanted something different from maybe your mid twenties to your early thirties. By the time you get to our age, oh shit! By the time you get to our age, you know you have a totally different view of how life is in general. There's a lot of things that you understand and it's a lot of things that you're still trying to learn and i think you take a different way and a different a different approach on how you try to handle situations like if i got in trouble when i was younger i used to get my ass whooped and we kev you know getting ass whoopings was was a part of the, the oh, deal of and i just never seen myself put in my hand i mean i don't put my hands on my kids at all you know what i mean but the conversations that i have with my my kids are real, you know, just real conversations to kind of make them feel where I'm coming from. Not something to maybe belittle you, but let's have a real one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe you don't see my, my point. And maybe you, I'm not stressing how important this is to you without telling you that, yo, you're just fucking up. It's, yo, you're taking a path that you don't really know what really comes at the end of this path. And I do. And I'm trying to show you what not to do. Or if you find yourself in a situation, how you need to handle yourself, or at least come to me for help. Don't be the person that thinks that they can handle everything on their own. I'm here for you. You know what I mean? I dedicate myself to you. So use me when you need to, because regardless of whatever you do, I'm going to love you to the end of my days. So not, not knowing that. And, and as, as a kid, like you kind of know, all right, yeah, people love you, but I used to see things by their actions. You know what I mean? Relationships that I built, like with y'all, we built a relationship that can't be broken. You know what I mean? And it created a love and a, a genuine care for each other. There's people in your life that are family to you that you don't have that same bond with. And you know these people, oh, this is, this is my aunt's son. This is, I mean... I come out the pot from him and we don't even really talk like that. You know what I mean? And I try to show my daughter like, yo, you got to really watch people's actions. The people who care for you will show you. The people who don't will show you. <clears throat> Can't be naive to things. And I didn't have that view. Even when people was talking to me, it was, it was just like, sometimes you want to be in with the in crowd and that ain't really it. You know what I mean? You got to stand aside and, and just be you, do your thing. If I had to focus on that a lot when I was younger too, see, see the views that I had when I was younger, as, as they change with the people that you're influenced by, this shit just, it, it just corrupts all the things that you want, you really want out of life. Like Dre said, traveling. My daughter's been all over the world, damn near. She, her passport is crazy. That's fire. If I had the opportunity to do that while I was younger and understand what life is like outside of where we are now, I'm pretty sure that the views that I have would have changed immediately. I need to be able to do this on my own. And mm -hmm. once my parents are, once I'm grown and my parents are done having me travel around the world, I need to be able to do this. I want to do things to be able to be in other countries and other places that I love. I just started traveling a few years ago. Yeah. Kevin trying to get me out the country for, for how long? A decade. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, as soon as I got out there, I saw you dream of. You know what I mean? Going mm -hmm. back to place, back. serenity and, yeah. and peace. Yeah. And and it that's just that just wasn't where my mindset was. I needed a new car back then, or I, mm -hmm. I needed new clothes, or I needed a new uh, oh, trivial I'm, shit. I'm tired of this shorty. I need a new shorty. You know what I mean? Kev used to say, Yo, man, you break up with a girl if her if her sneakers was untied, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he used to say this shit to me all the time. And the things that I hold most dearest to me right now. Are the people who are who I surround myself with, my kids, my future wife. You know what I mean? And that's why when you get back to what we said earlier, pushing that button, it's mm -hmm. a hard decision. Is it something that you're willing to give up? Because you don't know if you're gonna end up in the same place with the same people. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Uh, we're gonna wrap it like that was a good thing to wrap it up in and and people you're hopefully y'all got something from this topic today, man. Like hopefully you've grown and you look back at yourself and you say man i've grown a lot and to the people who are still stuck in 
Peter Pan mode, like, hopefully you'll grow up eventually too, man. You can't always keep doing the same shit you've been doing your whole life, man. So, I hope y'all enjoyed today's episode. We're out, man. It was a deep one. Usually we're funny. We try to be funny. I mean, we had a good time. We said some funny things, but, you know I mean? At this point, it ain't always you got to get some real shit. Yeah. All right. All right, then. Let's wrap this shit up. Peace. Peace. Today's sponsors are brought to you by Ideas Unlimited. Do you have a birthday party coming up? Maybe a baby shower. Could be a wedding party. School's letting out. Could be a graduation party in mind. Ideas Unlimited has it all from custom 360 booths with backdrops to a personalized throne chair with centerpieces. You like snacks? Everyone likes snacks, am I right? Get your snacks custom made with your face on it. Ideas Unlimited can do it all and more. Get all your party needs at Ideas Unlimited. Your party one-stop shop. You can contact them on Facebook and Instagram. Ideas Unlimited. Proud sponsor of the Opinionated Podcast.